Hola chamas y chamos, welcome back to Alvaro Dev Labs. In today's episode, we are going to learn how to add 3D to your Astro website by using 3 yes. Last week, the team behind Astro launched not only the highly anticipated version 3 of their framework with tons of new features like view transitions and improved image optimization, but also a plan for 2024 to launch Astro Studio, a globally distributed edge data platform designed exclusively for Astro. Congratulations to the Astro team for providing the front-end ecosystem such an amazing framework, but also for providing us the cutest open source pet ever. It's so cute. That being said, I decided today to try how easy it will be to integrate my 3D library for Vue called 3CS into Astro. Let's find out. Let's start by installing a new Astro website. So in the terminal, I'm going to use the command npm create Astro latest. I just uh, hit enter. So it's going to ask me to install this package, the create Astro. And um, right away, you can see this super cute uh, pet. Uh, it's called Houston. And one of the things that I like the most about the developer experience here in Azure is that it's actually like a wizard that helps you go with the installation. And it has so many like funny um, phrases and so on. So we should, where should we create uh, the new project? So I'm going to call it uh, Tres Astro. Okay. So it gives you the option of including sample files, use block template. Let's use this one. It's incredible the, um, the amount of detail that the CLI has. Um, it looks really good. I really enjoy it. Yes, please. So installing dependencies with NPM. Curious, if I install it with PNPM, we'll do it with PNPM. Several days later. It's taken a while. One week later. Okay, finally installed the dependencies. So you plan to write uh, TypeScript? Yes, uh, strict, I guess. Initialize the new repository. Good luck out there, astronaut. <laughs> I love it. So let's start by opening the repo then. Okay, so now um, I have opened the template in VS Code and I'm going to just run the command to uh, serve it. So npm run dev. And it's going to open on uh, HTTP uh, localhost 4321, which is kind of an Easter egg because it's the countdown that you do normally when you launch something into space. So nice detail. So let's click in the localhost and it will open this on the browser with uh, just a template of a blog. Okay, um, it's really fast, I, I had to say, the dev environment. And here we have like a header and some markdown content, I guess. Um, so if you ever worked with Astro before, you know that Astro works with Astro components, it's like a syntax, okay? And it makes a little bit like markdown with um, components uh, like this, like HTML. Okay, so here you have something like a script tag in in view or as well, and the rest is like the um, the template itself. Cool. So now that we have this, um, let's find here is the content, the blog, and the first uh, post, for example. But I want to find the page that we are seeing in the home page, which is this one right here. I'm going to remove the terminal for a moment. So this is the one that we are seeing right here. Okay, cool. Now let's install 3 yes. So to install 3 yes, what we need to do is open the terminal here. I'm going to add another one. So I'll leave it up. And I'm going to install NP, uh, I'm going to use NI. Um, so 3 yes core, which is the core package. We're going to install uh, Cientos, which is an abstraction. It's a, a library that extends the core, okay, with a lot of abstraction composables and components. And we're going to install three. 
Three is a peer dependency, so we need to install it separately. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. If we want to use TypeScript, we need to install the types of uh, three separate as a depth dependency. Once we did all that, let's find out how we can add it to Astro. To use Stress.js, yes, we are gonna need to use Vue. And one of the things that I like the most about Astro is the integration with several other frameworks like React, Vue, Svelte, you name it. So all you need to do is install one of the plugins for the specific framework and you're able to use components inside of your Astro website. So let's do that. And let's add um, npx astro add view. Let's say yes, it's version 3.2.30. So it's going to install some things inside of the configuration. And if we look for the configuration here, I'm going to remove the terminal for a moment and just look for astro uh, config. Okay, now we're gonna see that we have this uh, view like plugin, really similar to how we use the plugins, okay? So integrations, we have uh, Markdown um, MDX, sitemap, and view. So that means that we can start using view inside of our Astro website. Let's see if it works. So I'm gonna create here in components, a new component called uh, the experience view. And let's create a single file um, TypeScript component and say, hello, view. Let's save it. And now in the index Astro, somewhere just below the, um, the header maybe, let's put, um, how is it called, the experience. Okay, so we can out import it here from components. Let's save. And if we go here and refresh. Okay, perfect. Now it's working and we have our hello view here. Now it's time to add a scene into our view component. To do that, we're gonna remove the placeholder that we had before and we're gonna add a div, okay? And we are gonna set um, like a class called uh, container, okay? We're gonna style it in a bit. So. In the style tag, let's say press container to have a width of 100% and um, a height of 100% will not be required. I will say something like 400 pixels maybe, okay? And then we need to say to the canvas to be width and height and 100%. Okay, let's save this. And now, um, instead of this, we are going to add a Tres Canvas component and we're going to import it from the Tres Yes core. So we're going to open and close and everything that you create inside of the Tres Canvas is going to be the Tres Yes renderer. So what it's going to do is it's going to convert magically all the tags that you put here into actual tree instances like objects, cameras, and so on. So the first thing that we can actually add is a perspective camera. So I'm going to add it here and say Tres Perspective Camera. There is no need to import it because it's out import and the position um, you need to pass like an array here, okay? So this is gonna be the coordinates in the X, Y, and Z, okay? So let's save this. Actually, I don't know why the formatting looks like this. So um, let me check if I can uh, space. Several days later. Okay, I cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I was make, making me crazy. Okay, now that we have the uh, Tres Perspective camera, uh, we can try to add some configuration to the Tres canvas so we don't see a blank um, like a scene, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy some of them from another project um, because yes, laziness. Uh, but basically here we are asking to use a background color that um, this one simulates like the space, okay? 
um, we're going to set the alpha to false um, and the shadows to true. And these ones, we actually can import them from, there are some configuration that you can import for the canvas uh, from tree, okay? So let's save that. And now let's go back here. And now we see that we have like in the space here, but nothing is happening. The dev tools. Let's open this one. And we see that there is a canvas and then the canvas is actually being mounted. And it's not showing anything because essentially Astro doesn't deliver any JavaScript by default. So it's delivering all the HTML static content, but you need to actually tell Astro which components you want to be hydrated. So to do that, we need to go here into index Astro. And where we have our experience, we had to use a prop called client and say load. If we do that, now we can see that something is rendered because the JavaScript just jump in and we're rendering uh, like a black canvas. It's not taking the color because we actually didn't pass this yield into the canvas. So I'm going to do be vine here and pass the L. If we go here, we're going to see that now it has a proper color. Now we need something to see in the scene because right now we're seeing a black space, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is inside of the trash canvas, I'm gonna create an object. So let's create a simple sphere. I'm going to use trash mesh, okay? So this is like the wrapper, okay, of it. And um, you can pass a geometry inside and a material. So in this case, I'm gonna use not the box one, but the sphere. Okay, and the arguments are the constructor of um, the 3GS instances. So it's an array containing, for example, in this case, the sphere uh, geometry will have uh, the radius and then uh, how many segments they need, okay? Then for the mesh standard material, I'm gonna use just a normal material because it's easier to, to show. Yeah, this one is, um, it creates like a map of colors that represent the UV map, okay? So I'm gonna save and let's go back here, maybe refresh. And now we can see that we have a sphere, okay? So we already have an object inside. But this is a Astro theme and since we are in the space, we just launched a rocket, let's make an scene that actually resembles that. Now is when the fun part begins. So let's go back to the code and here, let's remove the sphere and let's add an abstraction from Cientos. So in Cientos we have an abstraction that actually helps you to create the stars as particles. So if I refresh here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's full of white dots, okay? I hope the recording is able to, you are able to see it. But if we want to play a little bit around, there is something called Orbit Controls. The Orbit Control is also an abstraction from Cientos, and what it uh, helps you use is that you can zoom out, zoom in like this. So you can see that this, um, the stars are working in a, in a specific domain. Okay, if you go zoom out too much, you're actually seeing the sphere of the particles. Okay, so let's go inside like around here, okay? And um, now we have like a star theme uh, into space. So what we can add to the scene to make it more special? So I was so hyped by the new release that I actually modeled it in Blender and the pet uh, Astro. And it was pretty fun to do because it's pretty simple to do, to do in Blender. Um, the fun part was actually this outline that they have that it looks like a gradient, okay? And so I interpreted as this and I managed to create this shader by using a color ramp and the coordinates of, um, here there is a node in, sh in shading, okay? That is called generated. And this is gonna take the bounded box of the object and create the gradient, okay? So I just added the colors the same as they have here. And then I create like an emission. This is 3D stuff you don't need to worry about. Okay, uh, I also uh, created in Figma uh, the vector for the uh, cute face. <laughs> One of the cute face, I just added it as a texture here. Okay.
okay? So uh, to add it to the 3D as a scene, all you have to do is come here, select the object that you want to export, okay? And here, go to export, and we're going to use a format that is really useful in 3DS called GLB or GLTF, okay? This is a global one. I think it was made by uh, Disney, I think. Uh, and it's like a really standard one. The other one that is really used is FBX, which is, where is it? This is, I, I don't see it. Oh, no, hey. Uh, FBX. Uh, we also have another loader for this one, but let's use GLB. And now let's select where we are going to add it. So uh, I had to put it in projects, Astro, um, public. And here it will be really nice to add a new folder. So let's create a folder called models. And let's inside. What we are going to include is the selected objects. And in transfer that. Um, yeah, we are going to compress it because we are going to use Draco compressor to make it easier to load. And in the mesh, it's important that you select uh, apply modifiers. This is quite important. Okay, so once we do that, um, you don't see it because the resolution, but, and also my camera, sorry. Here there is like an export GLTF. Okay, so let's do that. And I think I didn't name it anything. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's go back to the VS Code and see. Um, so public models Astro Houston. Oh well, it has the the name of the uh, of the file. So Houston, Houston, like this. I, I think it's right like this. So something cool. Um, you I have a um, extension. Uh, in in here in VS Code that uh, allows me to pre-visualize the GLTF models. Um, let me remember. So the extension is this one. It's called 3E by Degrade. Um, I couldn't find it before, so that's why I'm adding this part of the video. And uh, you can see that you can like preview a lot of different models into the VS Code without leaving it. So I will add it on the description below the link if you want to install this extension. So going forward, we see that we have uh, the model, but it doesn't look to have the, um, the correct shader. So probably we will need to create our own. How we add it to the scene? To add a new um, model or anything, um, let's first add a new component. So this one is going to be called Houston. Inside of Houston, I'm going to just basically create, um, how you call it, like a um, basic view uh, single file component. And we're going to use something called use GLTF. Okay, this is co also coming from Cientos and it's a composable that allow us to um, load models into our scene. So I'm going to use um, like a variable here, okay? And just trust me on this one, you want to get the nodes from this composable, okay? So it's a property inside that is called nodes. We need to use a wait because it's an asynchronous operation. At the end, we are loading an asset. And we are using the public folder uh, models Houston GLB. Okay, um, so the way to get the actual uh, model is to go inside of nodes and um, just use the name of it. So in Blender, we see that it's called Houston. So this is exactly the name that we need to put here. Okay, um, to, pre to visualize it, we're going to add here, let's just remove this. And we're going to use something that is called primitive. Well, it's a tag, so primitive, okay? And it accepts something called object. So basically this used the custom render API to render whatever you create programmatically here. So if we pass this, we now add it to the scene. So we need to add it here and probably use suspense because it's an asynchronous operation. And let's use Houston from view. So here, perfect. So let's go here, let's refresh, but we don't see anything. 
so probably we have an error. So let's toggle the developer tools again and it's a failure to load. Um, oh, okay. Uh, I know what happens. So go to Tres Astro again. In Houston, we can also pass some properties to do, uh, define the drag loader. So the drag loader, what it's going to do is compress the model um, to make it more performant. Uh, since we added compression, we need to use this. So once we do that, now we can see that we have our uh, Houston right away here. But it doesn't look quite Houston, right? Um, first of all, we don't see the face, um, but this, that is an easy fix. And then we will need to create a shader for the outside. So I forgot to tell you that in the description below, I will put the link so you can download the Astro Houston um, model that I did in Blender, uh, the .glb, okay? It's totally free, please don't pay for it, okay? It's zero, and um, uh, click I want this. Um, also, it's important to say that the original Houston concept is owned by Mark Peck, okay? He's the designer of the Astro team. I actually asked his permission to um, put this on Goombro so you can use it in the tutorial. Uh, the Astro team is really nice, so they actually told me, like, go ahead, enjoy, okay? So make sure also um, give it a thumbs up in Twitter um, for his amazing job with, um, with Astro. So, uh, yeah, download it. A little disclaimer before we continue. I don't know why before the types didn't kick in, so I had to restart the whole VS code, and now the, um, three, like, the three types are working. So uh, everything here is now uh, correctly uh, typed. You can also see, for example, if you use the position here, it's gonna give you like, okay, what does it mean? The first number is the X, the Y, and the C. And if we add um, something more, like the field of view, okay, it's gonna auto-complete it here. So make sure the types are actually working to have a better developer experience when you're using Tres.js. Um, what we are going to do now is, uh, since um, we cannot see actually the face of it, um, let's go back here. It's because we don't have lights into the scene. So I'm going to add a Tres Ambient Light, okay, with a white color. And actually, let's put the intensity to 1. So how strong is the light? And now we can see that pretty face right here in Houston. That's cool. So we can add some more. Um, there is also the Tres um, directional light, okay? Um, pretty similar, um, just make sure you add a position to it. So I already have like uh, some positions that look like a studio. So I'm just basically going to copy and paste the two of them, okay? To simulate like a three point or two point um, lighting, okay? So this one is in this position and this one in this position. And actually, we should go a little bit back with um, with this, maybe like this. And let's say the camera to look at some points. So we are going to say 0 in the x-axis, y, and z. And now, let's see. Well, it looks kind of weird. Let's add a 5 here. So it's like an isometric. Nice. Cool. OK. Now we have Houston and we have a spray face. Let's add the shader for the gradient. Okay, this next part is a little bit more complex and actually doesn't have anything to do with Astro or View. Okay, so feel free to skip it if you want. But if you want to learn how to add the effect to the Houston, like the gradient colors around, stay a little bit. So we're going to learn how to use shaders. So shaders are uh, programs, okay? Really low level programs that are gonna directly um, connect to the OpenGL itself, okay? So uh, we're not gonna program them in JavaScript, actually. We need to program them in, in um, a language that the files are .glsl, okay? So in order to do that, we need to install actually a plugin in Vite and Astro make it really easy to do. So um, I'm going to open a terminal here and just going to install bit plugin GLSL as a developer um, package, OK? And once we do that, we can easily, in the define config here, 
uh, set a property of bit and being able to uh, configure the bit under the hood of Astro. So I'm going to add plugins and instead of the plugin, we're gonna add this bad boy, okay? So we need to import the GLSL from, no, there is no Astro yet, I guess. Okay, so for the plugin, and we're gonna call it in the plugins itself, okay? You probably need to restart uh, your application to grab this change. Okay, so everything is working again. Yes, cool. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create the shaders, okay? Um, I'm not gonna like explain a lot of it, okay? Because it's really like complicated. Uh, I have some videos in my channel um, regarding to shaders and how to use them in 3GS and 3 gs So make sure if you want to learn more, just check them out, okay? Um, here, um, first of all, let's go to Houston. Um, Houston, if we console log the model itself and we go here, so um, it's a group, okay? A group of two meshes, okay? So in the children's, we can see one mesh is, is called round cube, which is the black one. And to achieve this effect, we are using also uh, another one, another buffer geometry that is round cube one. This one has the, mat the other material. So we're gonna use that one. To be able to search for it inside of this model, okay, because is you, you see it's a, a really deep uh, tree, right? What we're gonna do is use another composable that is available actually in the core. So we're gonna say import use seek. Uh, well, I don't know if it's pronounced like that, okay? But it's like search for it. And const, um, yeah, Let's call it outside, maybe, okay? And we're gonna use use seek, and we need to pass two things, the model and the name of whatever instance, or geometry or object we want to search inside. In this case, it's gonna be round cube, and it was no Pascal case like this, and the number, okay. So let's see if we can find it. So command um, here, and okay, let's refresh. So request it doesn't provide uh, use, ah, because it's from core, not from here, okay. And remember, sorry. So it's not like this, it's a composable, so we need to add a uh, seek by name, I think, is uh, the, and we pass the composable, so we call the composable uh, cons seek by name. Mm -hmm. And this is, okay, now, now it's okay. So this is a method that we use from the composable. So if we refresh right here, now we have the mesh. Perfect. So this is the one that we want to modify. We want to change the material of it, okay? So what we're going to do is do outline dot material. And we're gonna set a new material, which is gonna be a shader material, okay? So the shader material, mm, let's open here. We need to uh, import it from tree, that's fine. And we need to define three pro properties. One is gonna be the vertex shader, like this, okay? Uh, you could do it as, um, a template, like a, a string, a template string, okay? But since we installed the GLS um, form, uh, plugin, we can actually do it like this. So uh, I'm not gonna add it in components, I'm gonna create a new folder. And in this new folder, here in the source, so new folder, it's gonna call shaders. Let's create a first shader, which is the vertex, GL SL and another one is going to be fragment 
GLS. Okay, so what is the difference between the two of those? So the difference is that the vertex is going to take care of everything that is uh, the position of the vertices of a model or a geometry. So all like the structure of it. And the fragment is going to take care of the visual aspects like the color, the, if it's shiny, if it reflects and so on. Okay. Um, since this tutorial is really not about um, how to use GLSL, okay or how to create shaders, I'm just gonna copy and paste. You're gonna have all this code in the repository in the description below, okay? Um, we're basically using the VOV, um, which is actually we're not gonna use the VOV, so I'm gonna remove it right away because we are gonna do it in a different way, okay? Um, we are basically here, we need to uh, add some uniforms into our Houston here, so Let's add it first, uniforms. We are gonna add a B box uh, main, mean and a B box max. What are those gonna be? Um, you remember that I show you here in the shading that we have this texture uh, coordinate we generated. So that's using the bounding box. The way that we can create the bounding box for our outline or for our model is by using B box and uh, add this box from tree and set from object. So we are going to create a new box that is containing the um, bounding box of the model itself. Okay. And we're going to pass the minimum and the maximum. We click save. Now let's go back to the vertex. Whenever you create a uniform here, it's going to be like pass it from the JavaScript into the shader um, program on the vertex. Also, we can define things that are gonna go to the fragment called bearing. So we're gonna generate these coordinates with the position minus the minimum of the bounding box and the maximum. And we are gonna pass it to the fragment. This part right here is just basically uh, the position of all the different vertices. Like, uh, I don't know, um, they're gonna take the position and the projection and the model view. Uh, it's, this has to be with the camera. Okay, let's go to the fragment. Also, I'm gonna copy and paste this one because this one is a little bit more complex. Okay, because we needed to implement the color ramp. Okay, so here is the implementation of the color ramp. Okay, I took the colors from here, the same colors. So that code there is exactly the same as this one in Blender. Okay, um, if you're interested in the code as well is in the repository in the description below. It's just a function that you pass some colors and then you do some interpol uh, linear um, like lerp, okay? Um, and you calculate the mix and, and so on, okay? And then uh, with GL frag color, we define the color of each one of the vertices and we are gonna use these um, bounded box generated uh, text coordinates and the color ramp to do it, okay? So I'm gonna save it, and now we are need to actually import them. So I'm gonna do vertex shader here, and we need to import it from here. So vertex shader, let's call it like this, vertex shader from, we go back to shaders and vertex GLS, Okay, and now the same for the fragment. So import fragment shader from this. Uh, don't worry about this, is because we need to define a type declaration for GLSL uh, um, files, so you can ignore them. Okay, and here we need to pass this and we need to pass the shader. Okay, let's see if it works. So let's go back here, refresh. And we actually have an issue because it says outline is not defined. Outline, uh, because we say outside. Okay. Ta-da! Houston now has a really cool effect, like a gradient effect into it. Okay. So I know this part was a little bit complicated, but this is how you can achieve that special effect into our model. And this is how easy it is to add 3D to your Astro website using 3 And we learn a little bit more, like actually how to add 
uh, a model into it and uh, how to enable the hydration so the JavaScript can jump in, into the scene by using the view components and the property of client load. And also we learned how to create a shader with a nice effect of Houston. I hope you enjoyed this video, even if you are coming from the Astro community or the Vue community with Tresias. So um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Um, drop a like if you enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you. As always, subscribe for more content like this. Let me know in the comments if you want more content with Astro as well. See you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.